Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you blessed to be in church this evening? Are you ready to receive what God has for us today? Amen. Thank you for having us. We celebrate our pastor, our daddy, and our mommy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for this opportunity to be here and all the pastorate and everyone here. I can assure you that tonight's meeting, your life will not remain the same in Jesus' name. Amen. It is an error for you to come to church the same way and go back the same way. We trust God that you have an encounter today amen. with Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. And then if you, if you can, if you can just worship God in a few seconds, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost in a few seconds. Let's Lebrenda la basha, na mala bala la dosha, la bala dosa. She lebrenda la bamba la bala koshe, ne lebrega le dosha. Lebrega de le baba bala dosha, lebrega de le bela dosha. Lebrenda la bamba la bosha, la bamba la bala koshe, lebrega de dosha, la bala dosa. Lebrenda la bala koshe, la bamba la bala dosha. Lebrega papa bala dosha, la brande le bela dosha, lebrega la dosha. Mele brenda la barabara, dondo lo cosi, la barabanda la cara rosa. Mele de dosa, la barabanda la boscia, la branda la baracosa. In malabraca pala cosce, le brende le baladosce, le brende. Mele brocolo dondo lo cosi, la bramba la baradosa. Oh, le baica, ba 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 ba, le donde le capai. Le breca pa po pondo, le breca pa la cosa. Oh, oh, we bless oh, no, your name. We we'll worship you. We we'll give you praise. We we'll exalt you, King of Kings. We we'll exalt you, Lord of Lords. We we'll exalt you, Yahweh. Neda kapa indele baba boshe le brenda la baladosha. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We exalt your name. We worship you, Yahweh. The one that knows all things. Kabi see we bow before your throne. We give you all the glory. We exalt you. There is none like you. We don't gather in vain because we don't serve a vain God. Yeah. Yes, Lord, we are sure. We have an assurance that when we gather in your presence, we don't live the same. Thank you, Lord, because we are open to receive your breaths. Your mighty breath, that when you brood over lives, lives do not remain the same. Lord, thank you for your transformation. Thank you for minds that will be renewed. Thank you for hands that will receive miracles of your presence. We give you all the glory. We exalt you. Be thou glorified in Jesus' name. We have worshipped. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You can have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Can we turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 13, verse 7, Amplified Version, Romans 13, verse 7, the Amplified Version, can we have it on the screen, if not, I may have to read from here, we are talking on honor the key to higher life, honor the key to higher life. We we'll lay certain foundations today, then tomorrow we'll fly higher. Amen. Amen. He said, "Okay, can, can we, we have, have it in un amplified, amplified, not amplified okay, classic?" Okay, it's okay. okay it's okay. okay. Render okay. to all men with their dues. Their dues. He said, "Pay taxes to whom taxes is due." Amen. Amen. Okay, say so pay to all what is due, tax to whom tax is due, customs to who custom is due, respect to whom respect, and honor to whom honor is due, and honor to whom honor is due. May the Lord bless the reading of his word into our hearts in Jesus' name. One thing we all desire as individual, we seek for respect, we seek for 
honor. You seek for respect. You seek for honor. It is very easy for pastor to come prophesy on the altar and say, this year you are going to get double honor. And we are very quick to shout, Amen. Hallelujah. You know, but then honor cannot fall on a life that is not honorable. Sure. You know, God desires us as believers to practice a life of honor. If we truly desire honor in our lives, then scripture said that we must be honorable. True. Amen? Amen. So honor attracts honor. True. Honor attracts honor. So you can't get what you cannot truly give. True. You want to experience a higher life. One of the keys that we have noticed that has helped us in our walk with God is the key of honor. Yeah, is the true. key of honor. True. I mean, if you need, if you want to receive honor, like my husband said, you have to give it. Yeah. You don't just wait to receive respect, receive something without you giving it. Many people sit to receive, but they are not willing to give. Mm. And honor is something of high value. So True. if I want to be a valuable person, I should give value. Yeah. And honor is value. So if I want to be a valuable person, whether in my marriage, in my relationship, in life in general, I need to be positioned to give it. Yeah. So it says, honor, give honor to whom? So there are people in your life that you should honor. Yeah. It says, respect to whom respect is due, and honor to whom honor is due. It starts with render to all men their dues, right? Yeah. So, and honor to whom honor is due. So there are people around you that, that needs to be accorded honor. Yeah. There are people around you that are due, that, that it is given, it should be given to them. But many people, especially in these times in our generation, are lacking honor. Yeah. Honor is something that is lacking our generation. That's the truth. It's, it's, very, it's very easy to talk honor, but not demonstrate honor. True. It's very easy. Amongst us, can you say, oh, you know, you, you, I, I am an honorable person. It's not what you say, it's what you live. It's a lifestyle. Praise God. The Bible says, let's look at Matthew 6, verse 21. Matthew 6, verse 21. It says, for where your, heart, where where your, your treasure, treasure is, is also, there, there your heart will be, be also. Yeah, so honor is a state of your heart. It's a state of your heart. Mm -hmm. So where your treasure is. So the truth is, some people say, eh, I don't know why, but I don't know why I don't feel respect. It's not... It's not, it's not what, when your heart is on something or someone, you respect the person. That's true. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So, honor is not something, it's not a speech, it's a demonstration. It's something you act, it's an attitude. So, where your heart, so in other words, it comes from inside. It's not an external thing. It doesn't just, you know, some people can give body language, it can kneel down for you. But inside your mind, they're insulting you. True. God punish this person. <laughs> You know, I don't blame this person. If I, if I, he, 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 he what, what is pastor even preaching that cannot preach with revelation? Mm. Some people even go on social media, Facebook, and be insulting authorities. Yeah. That we post things and say, ah, what is it, what this person is sharing? And say all manner of things. You know, some of you will kneel, you, you will lie down on the ground. Hey, hey, hey good morning, sir. All this kind of stuff. But inside your heart, you have a different thing. Yeah. So it's, it all starts from the heart. It's not what you say on the outside because you can be greeting and you are insulted in your heart. You can only be greeting your spouse yeah. and your mind says, see, and the God that will punish you eh, tomorrow. I regret ever marrying I regret you. ever marrying you. But yet, you are saying, oh, my honey, sweetie. Ah, <laughs> my darling, good morning, sweet. But yet, you are doing something else in your heart. So it's not, it's not what you do. So it's a posture of the heart first before a posture of the body. True. Honor is a posture of the heart first before it becomes a posture of the body. So while you kneel, you must first kneel in your heart before you kneel outside. Yeah. Because you can kneel outside and not kneel inside. True. So it's what you do on your inside that matters. You know, men do not see what's in our heart, but God sees That's what's true. in the heart. Praise God. So where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So honor is a heart posture, not necessarily a body posture. So three persons you must honor for a I higher life. life. Mm. So these three persons you must honor, not just your, your, it includes your marriage life, your relationship life, 
your business life. You know, you really want to go in ministry. These three persons you must honor. So we're going to deal with this today. Hallelujah. Amen. Number one, honor to people are ahead of you. Give honor to people are ahead of you. So these include your mentors. These include your pastors. These include your parents, your mentors, your pastors, your parents. Mm. Your mentors, your pastors, your parents. So, um, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. NLT version. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. It said, obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your soul and they are accountable to God. He said, give them reasons to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit. Hallelujah. Amen. So scripture demands that we should give honor to our spiritual leaders if we must experience growth in our lives. You know, but a lot of us or these generations have a way of casualizing spiritual authority, you know. Therefore, we do not get the desired blessings that we seek. There's a reason why God created the church. There's a reason why God instituted spiritual authority. So it is scripture that is saying that the reason why we should honor our spiritual leaders is because they watch over our souls, mm. you know. They are the watchmen of our lives. So we are not supposed to be familiar with the grace that they carry. Why? Because these leaders, they are going to give account of our souls. So when our leaders are busy calling us, checking on us, why not in church and all those stuff, they are doing it not because they need more members. They are doing it because they are going to give account for your souls. Mm. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, so he said, let us do this. Let us obey them such that they will have joy. Mm. Let me tell you a story. You know why we really need to listen to our leaders. Many years ago, one of my girls in church, she came and she said she wanted to get married to a guy. You know, this is a Gen Z, amen? Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> said she wanted to get married to this guy. You know, she said, she I said, why do you like this guy? She said, he's tall, dark, and handsome. I said, is that all? There should be more to why you like this guy. Then he started, he said, the guy has broad chest. I said, broad chest? What else again? Then, you know, when they say such a thing, they know that then that he fears God. You know what it means? That he has a touch of God. That's, that's the extra, the last part. He's always the last, amen? But the tall, dark, and handsome, he has the pink lips, you know? You know, you, you, you know? So, she said all that, and I told her straight up, I said, I don't know, I'm not comfortable with this guy. You know, my spirit doesn't take this guy. I, 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 see, I see something not clear. Can you give it time? Can we just pray about this marriage you're about to enter, you know? And she said, ah, Pastor, what are you talking about? You know, okay, I'll get back to you. Guess what she did? She went to go see a prophet. The mom now took her to go and see a prophet. A prophet suddenly, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. So they got to this prophet suddenly, and when they got to the office of this prophet, the moment they entered the office, the prophet said, hey, halaba, oh, <laughs> you know, you know, we, we like effects too much. We say our pastor is too calm, he's too gentle. So if he says, God bless you, you can't receive it. You want one that has drama. So this one came with drama, you know, gymnastics. And I said, the moment you entered into my office, I saw a name, a name, a name. Let me just get a, a name. John, John, John. Who is John? He said, is the guy I want to marry? Do I know you before? Have I seen you before? Celebrate grace. <laughs> we like drama. Oh, she was so happy. She has found, she has found the answer. So the, the, the prophet said, marry this guy. This guy is for you. So she came back and said she has made up her mind. She's going to get married. I said, see, I am the one that watch over your soul. What I'm seeing here is not clear. You know, can you please just be calm? And guess what? She slammed the door at me, leaving my office. You know, so... I didn't even know when she got married, so she quickly did her court marriage. And her mom said, don't tell anybody. Blah, 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 let's go get married. And they got married. So she had the opportunity to be with her husband for just a week because after a week, the guy disappeared. So they started looking for husband. 
they look for husband to the point now that they, they finally now heard from the guy like a month after. Guess where the guy was? The guy was in Dubai. The guy called and said, please, I'm really, really sorry. You know, my agent actually said that if I must enter Canada, I need to be married. So I came to church to get somebody that can help me with documents. And I used you to get the document. Please try to annul whatever we have done, you know, so that let's move with our life. And the lady wanted to die. Amen. That's what scripture is saying. That God gives you pastors to watch over your life. Yeah. Certain times we are more intelligent than our spiritual authority. Hmm. We are more intelligent than the instructions that they've given to us. You know, but we do not know. Proverbs 20, 20. Let's, let, let's look at Proverbs 20, 20. He said, he that dishonored his father or his mother, he said, his lamb shall be pulled out. Hmm. He said, his lamb shall be pulled out. And put it out of your lamp he said, if you insult your father or your mother, your light will be snuffed out in total darkness. darkness. So, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be, you're not going to be progressing. Oh, sorry, it doesn't mean you're not going to be wealthy, but something, there will just be a covering over your life that is just darkness. You don't know what's just happening. You really cannot make genuine headway mm. in life. Why? Because you dishonor fathers and mothers spiritual authority. True. It is very important. So scripture said, give honor to spiritual authority, men that are ahead of you. True. So you don't need to like them. You just need to honor. <laughs> you don't need to like the people you respect, but respectfully like them. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't like them, but I respect them. That's because, true. Because honor is not a condition. It's an instruction. Yeah. He says obey. And it's not a location thing. So you can, you would have been in Nigeria and say, okay, when I was in Nigeria, I was honoring my pastor. When I, when I left, when I left Nigeria, I'm here. Mm. I don't longer. Environment doesn't change it. It's yeah. an instruction. Instructions don't always have limits. It's not a location. It's not limited to a location. It's not constrained. It is an instruction. It, in fact, it says, "Hold oh, no, on, the key to a higher life." Yeah. If you insult your father or mother, it's not saying if you insult your father or mother that is misbehaving. <laughs> it's not. There's no condition yeah. to it. I remember one time because I came from a broken home. My parents are separated. Yeah. I didn't like the way my father treated my mom. It was a very terrible one. I, I grew up as a child that never looked forward to my father coming home. Yeah. I never wanted, I didn't look forward to it at all. You know, so every time my father came home, he would beat my mom. Yeah. So, I mean, seeing that kind of um, film happen in my home, I felt like hitting my father many True. times. True. You know, but then the Holy Spirit kept on teaching me, you know, I grew up hating my father, but the Holy Spirit kept on teaching me that, see, if you want to progress in your life, you have to honor him. Mm. You don't need to like him. You don't need to like the things he does, but honor him. Do you know that in the presence of honoring someone, God can change the person. That's true. Honor is a powerful weapon for vengeance. True. I'm telling true. you. So, you don't like, but you are, oh, you're just on the way of the instructions of the Lord. Mm. So, I don't like his ways. I am not running him down on social media. I'm not running him down to my friends. I'm not running him down to my church members. Because when you truly honor someone, you pray for the person. Yeah. If you value someone, you will pray. True. So you are not running. I don't like how pastor does it. I don't like what he says. Sometimes I feel like he preaches about me. <laughs> but there is no condition to it. It's honor. Mm. I don't like the way he talks about giving, giving, and all the things he talks about in church. The word is honor. Mm. So you don't have to like his ways, mm. but you can honor the way of God. Yeah. So I don't like the ways of my pastor. I don't like the ways of my parents. I don't like the ways of higher authority, but I honor them because it is the way of the Lord. True. So I don't like the ways of men, but I honor the way of God. That's what, it's, that's what it is. So it is obey your spiritual leader. So you don't need to like it. You don't, I know that you are big, you would have been this, he calls you and all of that. It's fine, but it is obey. Mm. So I don't need to like him, but I honor him. Yeah. That's what it is. So honor is an instruction. So if you fear God, you should honor God. You should honor. So, so let's okay. confirm that in Romans 13 verse yeah, 1 Romans to 13. 2. Romans 13 verse 1 to 2. Romans 13, verse 1 to 2. It said, let every soul be subject to the governing authority. It said, for authority, for all authority comes from God. Mm. Confirm right now. 
All authority comes from God. Whether you like it or not, all authority comes from God. And those in position of authority have been placed here by who? By God. By God. So let God fight the battle. Don't be the one to fight it. Mm. Are we talking now? You know, your responsibility is to give honor. Yeah. He says, so anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. Mm. So let's, let me portray some of my wife's story because a lot of us may be in that shoes. So finally, my father-in-law, my father-in-law eventually drove my mom out, my mother-in-law out of the house with five girls and married a side chick. You can't forgive such a person, right? Because they were pretty young when he did all that. So the mom had to go back to the family house and that was where she tried to raise the children. So this man was busy enjoying his life and all the stuff. So my wife entered into my saying that no man will treat her like her father. So she refused to let go of what her father did and never wanted to forgive the man and, you know, was disregarding the man. So guess what? When she got into marriage, we realized that we started having issues in our marriage. If I tell my wife that this chair is red, she'll say, no, it's black. I say, but this chair is red. It's black. I mean, for three years, we're having serious issues in our marriage. We'll quarrel, we'll fight, not physical fights. I've never read man to my wife. We'll fight, we'll argue, you know. The stubborn was too much. At the time, I was hearing clearly that our marriage was going to last just five years. That would be out. Because her senior sister's marriage lasted five years and it was, she was, she was, they, they were out. And now we got married and, and this same issue was going. And the Holy Spirit began to deal with us. The Holy Spirit began to deal with her. The Holy Spirit now told her that, see, the reason why you are going through this, or you both are going through this, is that you have not let go of your father. You have not let go of your father. The things you ate about your father, you are now repeating it in marriage. So let go of him, forgive him, and let him go. Give him the honor that he deserves as a father. But he's not doing well, but just respect him. So that moment, my, my, my wife broke down and surrendered to God and surrendered her heart to God. And that was when we started enjoying peace in our marriage. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Although we, we are 10 years in marriage now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the point is this. Authorities may not be fair to you, but scripture is saying, it is God that instituted them. You can't start a battle with them. You will not win the battle. I've served in several churches. I've had opportunity to leave. We, we served in a church where we needed to leave to go start our church. I remember when two different pastors were about to leave from two different cities. One of the pastors told me, he said, oh, I'm going to mobilize everybody and go start my own church and everything and scatter the work. He told me straight up. I told him that I'm not going to do that. You know, if God doesn't give me member, I'm okay. If it's just myself and my wife, I'm okay. I'm good. You know, that's what I told him. I was like, no, your strategy. For one year, he was busy telling the people bad things about the general of Asia because he needed to mobilize them to go start his own church. And he did. He succeeded. I mean, when it was starting, it started very big. When I started, I started very small. Who looked blessed? It looked blessed. Four years after, our church is four years after, the story has changed. The story has changed. Our church looks so big. I mean, we have this space issue right now. And there is struggle. I say, man, who is well done? What is the key? The key is honor. Mm. Don't take what does not belong to you. Mm. What does not belong to you, do not take it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you see, honor preserves not just you, the people connected to you. True. True. It doesn't just preserve you, the people connected. So also, this honor exposes not just you, the people who are connected to you. True. Look at the story of Noah and his children. Yeah. See what happened. One of the sons that dishonored the father. What happened? The cause did not just come on him. It came on his generation. Yeah. So that's what happened. So you can be dishonoring think that, oh, maybe like, the, like what my husband said, the pastor started in a big way. But it didn't last. Mm. You see? And you, you know what happened to that kind of visionary? It affected the people that were connected to him. Mm. 
So dishonor attracts costs, not just for you, for generations that will be connected to you. So honor is a very deep thing. It's very deep. Amen. Number Amen. two, people should honor, honor to strangers and friends. friends. Honor to mm. strangers and friends. First Peter chapter 2, verse 17, NLT version, it says, respect everyone. Somebody say everyone. Everyone. Honor to strangers and friends. Respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God mm. and respect the king. the king. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, amplified version. If, if, if Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, amplified version, it says, do not neglect do not neglect to extend hospitality to strangers. In the brotherhood, be friendly, cordial, and gracious, sharing the comfort of your home and doing your part generously. For through it, some as what? Entertained angels. Certain yes. times, what God wants to bless you is going to shroud it, is going to hide it with strangers. Mm. You know, it's going to bring strangers your way. I am going to, let's see how you are going to honor them. Mm. I have seen people rise in life because of strangers, because we're blessed to strangers. I've seen people lose their crown because of how they treat strangers. Mm. I'm telling you. Yeah, true. One of the greatest financiers of our ministry, you know, many years ago, how did I meet him? Because he was sharing the testimony later. You know, I met him along the road. He sent for me and said he wanted to see me. And guess where he said to see me along the road? He wore tattered clothes. You know, some of all these big men, you cannot really tell uh, whether they are rich or not. They can, they can, they can just mess you up. You know? So this guy just wore just wore tattered clothes and just came and we are along the road. He said, I want to see you. He said, uh, God said I should be putting Tom Tom in your ministry. Tom Tom. That I little, said, little thing. Yeah, little. He called it Tom Tom. That's what he said. Tom Tom, Tom is sweet. Uh, he's a uh, candy. Yeah, candy, yes. It's candy. Yeah. So he called it Tom Tom. So it's candy. So he said, God said I should be giving you candy in your ministry. So I smiled. Then uh, he said, okay, I'll follow up on you. No problem. And all the stuff. I did not know that. He did not just tell me. He told four people. Because it was later, many years after I started telling him, he said, there were four people God sent me to, to help in my city. Three of us, each of four of us were pastors. The first one after dishonor, because the person underrated who he was, fell out. The second fell out. The third fell out. And I was the only one that was standing. You know why? At every point, he would send me on an errand to run some assignment for him. Despite the fact that he had not given me what he promised me, I would keep running the assignment. So every one of what he was giving us an assignment to run, said it as he would tell me and say, come to my company, just let me sort this stuff and everything. I'll go and do it. Then I'll take proposal and go and give to him and say, we are planning our Windows event. He said, ah, I don't even have money. Oh, God. And he will not pick our calls. I mean, he did that for three years. He will not pick our calls. He was doing it to every other. The, the rest started cursing him. Stupid man. Useless man. <laughs> He's using us. He's using our destiny. But we didn't know that God was using to test us to see how serious we were. He told me, I met him one, one time in the U.S., and he told me, he said, you remember that time, he said, there were four of you that God told me to help. He said, three fell out of the radar. You were the only one that was left. He said, that is why I do what I do for you. I mean, any, if we cough, he will do it for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Said it times, a lot of us, even, even in relationship, God sends a guy your way. The guy is in church. You know, you just commonize the guy because you have very wide mouth. You just curse. It's very easy for you to just see how the guy look at your big head. You can know him. You don't, you don't, you don't know who is seated close to you. So it is important that you honor people. It's True. very important. True. So the word is first Peter two verse seventeen. The word is respect everyone. Yeah. Some people respect people who are older than them, but will never respect people that are younger. Mm. So it's not it's not constrained. It's not restricted to age. So whether a person is young or old, respects. Respect the people who are the king keepers, but not the king. True. What do I mean? Look at the story of Esther. Before Esther met a king, Ahasuerus, she honored the custodian, the keeper of the king. Because you don't know who will recommend you. Honor, honor is a tool that recommends. That's true. That's what my husband was trying to say. 
You don't know who we recommend you. The gatekeeper, the man at the gates that you're always insulting can, can send your CV to the king. That's true. Can send your proposal to the king. You don't know. So Esther came. She found favor in the sight of the custodian, her guy. But she had not met King Ahasuerus. Mm. I can imagine out of all the virgins, you know, the air guy went to meet King Ahasuerus. There was some, there's someone that stands out out of all of them. It wasn't beauty. It was beyond beauty. You can be beautiful, but when you are dishonorable, you live a stagnant life. God. Can be beautiful, but when you lack honor, you will live a stagnant life, a stunted growth. So it wasn't beauty. They were the, the qualities for bringing wives for King Asher that they should be beautiful, mm. beautiful virgins. Mm. So it wasn't the virginity that also made that get to King Asher. <laughs> because you can be a virgin, but if you lack honor, you stay there. True. So she she had the beauty, she had the virginity, the purity, she also had honor. Mm. Because virginity without character will lead you nowhere. Mm. Beauty without character will lead you nowhere. So she had all of it put together and she found favor. So I could imagine Esther running to the king, you know, I mean, the, the custodian running to King Ahasuerus and saying, see, there's someone that stands out. Whole no always makes one exceptional. True. Why people are all in the, I mean, there's a, there's a full crowd, multitude, but what makes you stand out is not beauty alone, it's honor. Honor mm. makes you one stand out. If you read the story in the book of Genesis 24, it talks about um, 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 Abraham sending his servant, his eldest servant, to go and look for a wife for his son Isaac. So the eldest servant was on a mission, went out of the Canaan land and went to go and look for a, a, a wife for his son Isaac. And when he got to the entrance of the city, he found Rebecca. Rebecca did not know the other servant. Mm -hmm. Rebecca did not know the assignment. The other mm -hmm. servant was coming. She, the other servant met Rebecca and said, please, can you help me with water? Mm -hmm. The Rebecca came, maybe her, her mother sent her on an errand. She came to draw water from the well. It was in the evening, a cool evening. And you know how stressful. Have you ever drawn water from well before? <laughs> you are drawing water. I remember in our early days, early years in marriage, my husband said we should go and see his mom. When I remember that in my, in my mother-in-law's house, there has been no light. She has one reservoir where, where I just, I, God have mercy, I formed headache for my husband. I said, God, I'm feeling headache. Headache, headache. He said, ah, is this that serious? I said, very serious. It is. I dramatize it because I don't want to draw water from where. I cannot shout. I don't have power. I was so thin before, eh? I said, before breeze will blow, I can fall inside this well. Let me not just bother. So you can imagine, just imagine that kind of thing. Rebecca drank water from where? Probably the mother was cooking different. She was on the queue drank water. Got, and then this man, this stranger from nowhere just appeared. With camels. He, he didn't even ask for water for only himself. He asked for camels. That one was so annoying. Mm. For his day, how many camels? Mm. I can't even remember the numbers. I know camels, they drink water annoyingly. They drink water a lot. So he asked for what she, he asked for water for, for, for himself and the camels, and she did not complain. She gave it all mm. without knowing because you see there are strangers that come. You some of you will entertain angels on through her honor way. on our way. That's what happened to her. You know she had no idea what the assignment of this servant was. She only honored, and look at what happened. The rest you know the story. She became the wife of Isaac. It was just that was the only endorsement that was needed from the servants to know that this one is the one for. So, so, so there are some of you like that, you have missed golden opportunities. Mm. Because why? You, you, you know, it's only when I know the person, I should respect the person. When you can respect the people you don't know, you are truly honorable. True. When you only know, ah, it's pastor, but if pastor's uh, PA send me, I cannot go. Mm. That's what some of some people, some people do. If pastor's cleaner send me, I cannot go. If the person that is his secretary send me, I cannot go. But let it be pastor. Some of you will never do anything until it's pastor that sends you. There is a difference between service and nice service. They may look alike, but they are not the same. Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference. So, the Abraham did not need to... So, 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 there, are some, there, were, there, were, there have been some women that would have said no to the servant. But if they had seen Abraham, Father Abraham and his sons, they would have said yes. They would have said yes. But did not know that the servant had the backing of Abraham. Mm. Somebody can have the backing of the king and you miss that because it's not the king that sent you. True. So it's important. We must honor strangers. We must honor what? Strangers. Strangers. 
Number three. Honor to your spouse. Honor to your spouse. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she, she respects her husband. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Hebrews 13 verse 4. It says, let marriage be held in honor amongst all. In honor amongst all. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, honor to spouse is very important. Like, I remember the Holy Spirit dealing with me when it comes to, you know, especially for we women, you know, when you hear wife submits, why is it always women? Why is it always women? Does it have to only be women and all of that? They will not jump, will not jump to, me, I'm, let me use myself. I will not jump to, it's not only women. Even the, I will not tell my husband, even the Bible says submit ye one to another. It's, it's, the submission is for both of us. <laughs> and God had to start dealing with me. See, I wasn't like this. You know, my husband has said some things, you know, from my father and all of that. I wasn't this kind of person. Very headstrong. I was so stubborn. If my husband says his chair is red, I'll say it's black. Like, I will argue until I win. I must have my way. If he talks one, I'll talk ten. I'm like, are you the only one that have mouth? I have opinion. I will talk and talk. I was very... Do you know that I'll be praying for my husband like this, eh? You know, your spouse, the way he talks, if he wants to talk, he will raise his voice. I don't... And I'll be praying. Don't spirit say, you need to submit. I'm like, how? How? Am I not respecting him? I'm calm. I'm serving him. I'm doing this and all of that. And I learned that. And, and, and one of the things the Holy Spirit told me that submission, this thing called honor, is, oh, he doesn't need to respect me in return for me to respect him. Mm. So every time I try to quote the part where he should submit, it's not only me. He said it's not, he, why it should be mutual? I don't need to wait on him to fulfill my instruction. Yeah. So I'm not trying to wait on him. So this was the problem. I'm waiting for him. I'm, I'm saying, oh, he has to. You don't need. True. You saw some men, they'll put conditions. I cannot, no, I won't do anything for her. I will not until she respects me. No, that's not what the scripture says. Go, ba go back and read Ephesians 5. Christ wasn't waiting on the church before he laid down his life. For the church before he honored us, before he honored the body. He went all the way. Even while we did not love him, while we hated him, he was still Jesus. Yeah. So the same thing, even in our marriage, in honoring our spouse, we're not waiting on any of us. We're only fulfilling an instruction. I've said it has a way of talking to him. True. So mission is stillness. And the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. So what happens is that every time you honor, you create space for God to come in. But when you don't honor your spouse, you bring tension in marriage. You entertain attacks rather than entertaining God's presence. Yeah. So before you know it, there, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of friction that happens in the home and all of that. So it's be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. So in other words, every time you submit, every time there is a submission, a honoring language happening between husband and wife, what happens is that stillness happens and you need peace for God to show up. So honor brings peace, creates an atmosphere of peace. So, so that's what I usually tell singles. Never go into a marriage with somebody that you cannot submit mm, to. True. You know, a lot of us are excited. I love him, I love him, I love him. But you want to get into marriage and you are not ready to be naked. The Bible says that you were both naked and you were not ashamed. Mm. You know, that's what submission is all about. Submission means that I am naked, I am truthful to you, I am open to you. Everything that I am is you back. Mm. Certain things, you know, setting up our opinions. I would not lay it on the altar of love. True. So there are three people in marriage, the husband, the wife, and Christ. Yeah, true. So a lot of people don't know that there's Christ in marriage. So when you want to fight your opinion, for example, even to the man, even when I want to insist on setting up my opinion, I always remember that there is Christ. True. There's, a, there's somebody I can talk to mm. that knows how to talk to my wife. True. So a lot of us don't talk to that person. Mm. We're so quick to talk to our friends. And many times we have very bad friends. The moment you talk to that, your friend say, ah, I said it, man. Especially when the man leaves Nigeria to come to America. <laughs> His head is something else. No. Rather than getting bad information from people, talk to Christ. There's one who is the third party in marriage. Yes. Because when you came to the altar to, um, to, to, to be joined together, it was not just both of you. It was you, your spouse, and Jesus. Mm. So you must always talk to Jesus about 
your spouse. True. And, and it doesn't matter if your finance is higher. <laughs> what you receive is higher than your husband's. Mm. It doesn't matter whether you receive higher. Mm. That you receive higher doesn't mean that you are now the leader mm. in the home. So these are the things we need to be careful about. True. So we don't indirectly, one way or the other, dishonor people. You know, somebody walked up to me. She's a single lady. And she said, eh -huh, that she's about to get married to this guy. And she's the one that has, that has the more, she has more money. So the man will now be telling her where she should go, where she should not go. For what now? <laughs> when she's the one that has higher money and all of that. So it means that, so, so they will always have a conversation of how to spend, how to do this. Ah, no, no, she cannot. Oh, if that's the case, she cannot even marry. She's not ready for that. I'm like, it's even good that you have told yourself what you cannot do. So don't even marry. Because you must honor the principles in marriage. Yeah. Principles bet miracles. That's true. That's the truth. Life is governed by principles. That's the truth. The same thing with marriage. So I just told her, I said, you know what? That means you're not even ready for marriage. You, it's even good that you have told yourself the truth. That you cannot marry. Some people go as far as asking questions like, ah, um, um, somebody sent a message like, I'm two years older than the man I want to marry. What should I do? So I said, why age is not a prerequisite for a successful marriage? If you know you cannot honor the man because you are older than him, don't marry. True. That's the truth. Don't marry. There are people that, you know, there are, there are women who are married, but they are, the women are older than both. You will not see it. You will not even know. Then she's not, she's not only older, she now has more money. That's, that's wahala. So I said, don't even bother since you already have a problem with it. You are older, two years, and then you now have more money. So, the, so there are some people that they cannot stand advice from younger people. You don't understand? When somebody is younger, I say, ah, what does this person know? You don't even go to meet the person for mentorship at all. So that's the same way. So I told her, if you are that kind of person, that maybe something just happens, you just flip up and say, ah, have you forgotten that mother than you want the one that is only one month? There's a difference. <laughs> so don't even bother because there will be issues. I mean, people are coming from different backgrounds, spouses. So it's not possible to marry somebody and not have conflicts. They are healthy conflicts. True. It's not possible. So if you're not going to marry someone you are older than as a woman and you now have more money, when the man will not say something that you don't like, you not remember that day that you are older than the man. That's another wahala. So it's better not to marry. So what I'm just trying to say in the essence is, you are honoring your spouse without condition. We've said it severally. You are honoring your spouse whether you are older, whether you have more money, you are still honorable. Whether you are even the one that has the title in church. You know, there are some people, they are the ones that are the pastors. So they give, they dish it out like this. So they don't drop the, the heart of who they are. They take it to their home and they just, you know, like that. So you are not just, you know, honoring your, your spouse because you are older or you are younger, you are honoring because you need to honor. Praise God. And we honor ourselves not because we are perfect. True. So when God told us to go into a relationship and marry ministry, we tried as much as possible to let the people know the truth. Yeah. So we are not those couples that will come and tell you that, you see, in our marriage, we never had disagreement. Da, 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 da. We are angels. No, no. I read sociology. Where two or three people are gathered, there must be disagreement. True. That's the truth. There must be disagreement. She had a very different socialization process for more than 20 years of her life. The same thing with me. More than 20 years that we came together and we just understand ourselves. It's not possible. I was brought up differently. She was brought up differently. Yeah. Amen. So, but the point is this. In our imperfection, we must find a way to come together to align mm. so that we can make progress. True. It's very important. So never ever come to the point where you now regret. So you start looking at the other one outside. You see, for example, somebody you are there, you see, this couple, I wish my husband is like him. Mm. Oh, you cannot marry me. Oh. I'm telling you, if you know what my wife is dealing with, you cannot. Oh, I wish my wife is like this one. You cannot marry her. Oh, you can't carry her baggage. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your husband is customized for you. Your wife is customized for you. And the problem is customized for you. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> She's carrying my customized problem for 10 years. I'm carrying her own too. So just find a way around it so that you will live in peace and in happiness. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There are no perfect marriage anywhere. True. We are all imperfect. Our perfection is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Finally, honor to God. Honor to God. God. Mm. 
You must understand that you are not your own. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. said, Before I formed you, I knew you, and I have ordained you. Mm. He said, I have appointed you to be a prophet to nations. We must understand this fact that you are not your own. You are not what? Your, your own. own. God created you before the world began. He has ordained you for the assignment you are. So many times, a lot of us come into the world, you know, we give our lives to Christ, and we still have our own self-opinion. Mm. We still have our say. We have our say as regards our finance. We have our say as regards our relationship. We have our say as regards our business. We have our say as regards where we want to settle down. We have our say whether we want to be a worker or not in the house of the Lord. Scripture says you are not your own. True. Hallelujah. Mm. Let's check through Scripture. Let's see what happened to this man, the, the Bible called him the rich fool. Luke chapter 12, verse 18 to 21. Luke chapter 12, verse 18. Luke chapter, the Bible says it talked about a man who, who made so much money, so much money, and he was doing very well. The Bible says, then he said to himself, can you hear me with um, New King James Version? Thank you. New King James Version. He says, so he said, I, somebody say I. I. I will do this. Because this is the problem of a lot of believers. I has become our problem. Mm. So we don't honor God. Our language has become I. Mm. I will stop church. I will go to church. I will not pay my tithe. I. Because you feel that you created yourself. Mm. Are we together? This speaker, for example, cannot do more than the creator made it for. This, this speaker can't dance. This speaker cannot create light, cannot give light. Or can it give light? Or the speaker here is different. <laughs> the responsibility of this speaker is to amplify my voice. That's his response. And he can't do more than that. But many times, we are believers, we want to do what the Creator never made us for. We decide we, want to, we, we don't want to serve him. But God is looking for men that we honor him. He said, so he said, I will do this. I will put down the barn and build greater. And there, I, the guy's eye is too much. Mm. I will store all the crops and my goods. Continue now. I, hey, hey, another eye. And I will say to my soul, so you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. There was no place for God in the equation. There was no place for God in his finance. There was no place for God in his relationship. There was no place for God in his business. But look at how scripture says, Then God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Mm. Then, whose will those things be which you have provided? You. Praise the name of the Lord. I tell people, if you really want to really honor God with your entire life, try as much as possible to be attending funerals. I'm serious. Try as much as You know, I like funerals a lot. I'm telling you. Scripture said, it said, go to the house where they mourn. Because when you get to funeral, you see this lifeless person who has scars, who has everything going for him, and now he can't talk. The wife is crying. The children, they are crying. He can't really move. The essence of life is gone. The scripture proverbs start reading to my mind. He said, life is but a air's breath. Today it appears and tomorrow it is no more. Then you ask yourself, what are you living for? This whole entire also are muslin, are muslin. I need to build out. I need to do this and everything. They are all vanity if you are not living for Christ. Mm. If you don't have a place where you honor God, no altar. no altar where you service your relationship with God, where you give everything to him and say, God, mm. the reason why I exist is for you. I can't exist on my own. Mm. Apostle Paul rightly put it. He said, I, a prisoner for Christ. What he was saying is that I don't have my life. Mm. God is the determinant of my life. He's the determinant of my finance. Mm. He's the determinant of
because of what I do, I can't just wake up and get angry because somebody offended me in church. No. Because I don't live for myself. Because everything we do here on earth, we are going to give account. And the account that God determines, let me show you something. The, the account that God determines. Well, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7. He said, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for what? My for glory. my glory. So you see, the account you are going to give when you leave this earth is what glory did your life bring to Jesus? Mm, this is your life. What glory did your finance, all this hustling and everything you are doing, where is my glory in it? Because that day is coming. That day of reckoning is coming. Where God is going to ask us. Where is my glory in your children? Where is my glory in your spouse? Where is my glory in everything you do? There is a day where God is going to ask us. Hmm, true. So it's very important. And, and the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 5, it says, For to be carnally minded is hmm, death. True. For to be carnally minded. So for me to always... Allow my flesh control me is death. But to be spiritually minded is life. So in other words, the truth is if I need to live, I need to be conscious of his control over my life. True. So it is no longer I that lives, but <laughs> him that lives through me. Yeah. So I don't have a will of my own. No wonder scripture says, except a corn, a grain falls to the ground and dies. What happens? It remains alone. So, so in other words, for your life to produce significant result that aligns with God, it must come down. Mm. And you say, Lord, can you be my governor? Can you be in control over my life? Because let me tell you something. You can say, oh, I honor him. I give myself away. You can sing all the best lyrics that you know. But it is the posture of your heart. So the question is, how does your heart, what is your, the posture of your heart towards God? Mm. What is the posture of your heart? You want to choose a partner. What is the posture of your heart? Mm. Does God get involved in the business? For to be carnally minded is death. Mm. So in other words, my flesh has no business in choosing and living with the person. Yeah. Because my flesh will fail me. Mm. You know, many of us, many of us, I mean, we do a lot of things. We beautify our flesh. We do a lot of things. We move with our flesh. What our flesh thinks, our mind and all of that. But we don't put God in our program. True. What the scripture is saying, trying to say that when God has to be involved in everything that you do. Why? Because he created you. True. How can you pick a manual, a TV manual? I mean, you buy a TV, you don't look at the manual. Mm. Because when you look at the manual, it, it, what does it do? It naturally helps you for the oppression system of the TV. True. So when you don't look at God, when God does not govern you, God is not in control. You don't honor God in your movement. Mm. You don't honor God in the things that you do. Your, the operating, the real operating system of your life doesn't come into play. True. So do you honor God? Do you honor means to reverence, to fear him, to have his presence in your life, to have his presence in your home. Do you want to, when your children look at you, for those who have children, do they feel God in your life? Yeah. It's not in your talking. When they call me, because let me tell you something, honor has an aroma. It has yeah. a smell. True, true. Honor has a fragrance. When people truly see honor, you don't need to say I'm honorable, they know. True. I remember one time in church, I don't know what we're talking about, we're just talking, people were just talking about, ah, people that respect, you know, things in church, people that honor, all that. They didn't need to mention anything. Somebody just screamed a particular person's name. You know why? Honor has an aroma. You know when something smells, everybody perceives it. Yeah. Honor has an aroma. So when people come into your home, when people come into the church, when people come into your office, do they know that you fear, you reference God? Mm. It's not saying it is where well, I carry God. No. Mm. It's does my life show that God is in control? Does my life show that God controls every of my affairs? It's not in preaching it. You can preach something you are not living by. Yeah. You can preach to the, your colleagues. You can preach to the people around you, but you are not living by it. Does my life really, does it honor God? Does it honor God? Do I do the things that God demands for my life? Mm. 
Do I do the things that God demands for my life? There are certain things that God will demand from you. Do I do it? Am I living it? That's how you know that you honor him. Those are the ways to show that you honor him. How well do I? How well do I reverence him? Am I ready to quit? When God tells you to quit the job, am I, are you ready for it? Many of us are so controlled by our finance that we don't, we don't send God. We don't. So tonight we're going to take our time to pray. The word has come forth to us. In any way, we are deficient. Mm. With our friends, strangers, leadership, even to God, we have not surrendered totally to his will. Tonight, we want to take our time to pray. There's a demand on us. There's a demand on our lives, mm. especially in this fallen world where everything is going away from the things of God. We're going to pray. Can we all please be upstairs in this evening? Let's begin to surrender our life to Jesus. Every one of us. You may think you are doing enough for Jesus, but he opens himself to you and says, son, there are still territories to be covered. There are still work to be done. There are still souls to be won. You are resting. You are resting. You are resting. Where is me in your equation? Just begin to talk to him. Just begin to talk to him. Invite him. You desire a double honor in your life, then you must give honor. In your worship, in your posture of prayer. Oh, Can you take your prayer Come on, take this moment very seriously. And in few minutes, you want to say, Lord, I surrender my will. I surrender my aspiration. I surrender my direction for your control. I surrender my marriage. I surrender my relationship, Lord. And I need you to have your way, have full preeminence over my life. I like kind of la ba 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 la dosa. Ne rigi di ba 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 zuri amerika paya. Ne breka ba 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 la bosa le branana. Don't be a spectator tonight. Don't just stand and be distracted. No, while you are here, you wanna say, Lord, I surrender. I lift my heart, my all of me to you tonight. Ala bram ba la bosa le ba. Without me, without you, I am nothing. Ala ba 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 la ba ondo do koshe le bere yandere kapaya ne riki di biya ba la doshe le bara da dosa. I cannot do life without you, Lord. I give myself away. Ala broko poshe ne le ba ba la dosa le breka ba 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 la ba la dosa ne le be 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 riki di amba la bosha la ba la dosa. I surrender all. I surrender the whole type. Feel everything, every part of my being. Everything. I surrender my children this day to I you. I surrender my spouse. I surrender all, all. We told I won't hold them. nothing. I won't hold anything. Listen, listen, please listen, everyone. Please, I beg you not to be distracted. You just have a few minutes and want to round up. 
But please, I have a very strong knowledge in my spirit. You are here. You have derailed. You are here. You, you weren't like this before. You are someone that had so much honor, so much reverence for God. Somehow along the line, you just fell out of that radar. There is also somebody here. God has been giving you specific instruction about your life. But you don't, you don't have that courage. You don't have that strength. You don't feel like it that you should be there. You don't feel like you are useful anymore. I want to pray for We want to pray for you this evening. Please, I want you with a step of faith. I want you to come out. Come out. Please, this is not a time to look at whoever you came with or you did not come with. Just come out. You want to just say, Lord, tonight I want to surrender all of me. This is not me. I want to come back to you. I want, I want, I want to rededicate my life to you. I, I, I want you to build in me that, that obedience that I used to have. I want you to build in me that faith to stay with you. Please, very quickly, can you just come out? I'm waiting for that person. I'm waiting for that person. I'm waiting for that person. All eyes closed. Just make sure that you are fixed. I just, I just had a strong nudge. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Come on, I'm waiting for you. 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 Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. There's one person here. Sorry, there's one person here. You used to have very strong confirmations. You more like a prophet. You had this prophetic grace. But somehow, somehow, you, you just fell along the way. And, and it feels like you can't find it anymore. Oh, the Lord says that he wants to restore. He wants to restore to you. He wants to restore. He wants to restore those days back again. I don't know if you're already out. But if you're that person, can you lift up your hands? Can you just come out? Okay. Just lift up your hands for those that are out. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Everyone, just be silent. The ones that are standing, just please lift up your hands. Just help me with the strings. Everyone, just be silent. Movement, no distractions. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Sananda la bai, keledenda. Suno no 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 zerebai, de lebe de kai. Senene ne lebe bebe le bondo, solaban barabai. Sida zalaba. Just be silent, just be silent. Just be silent. Those of you that are out, just be silent. Everyone, be silent. Mm. I hear the Lord say, I don't know who this particular thing is for. He says, all things are passed away. Oh, the new will begin in your life. Oh, you, please don't say amen. Just be silent, everyone. Please be silent. He says, I'll make my name famous through you. Through you, through you, through you, through you, through you. There's, there's one amongst you. I see the Lord restoring the awe you used to have. I, I, I see it. I see the Lord restoring unto you. That oil, and it says I should let you know that the this present days, the glory days are back again. Nanda suba sula ba sele ba sene ne 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 ba zu 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 brigi di bala dum nuro koja lebre kabala doche lebre nda la bala doche lebre gele bo shina la ba bala bala doche. It says I'm I'm restoring the oil. It will it will flow. It will flow. I see the Lord touching you right now. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, thank you for strength upon these ones. Thank you for your life. The life of Christ that they have. Amen. Thank you for the life of transformation Amen. that they have. Thank you because you will go back. You go back strengthened in faith. You go back renewed Amen. in faith. You go back and you begin to see strange things about your Amen. life. You go back in peace. I see peace restored upon someone. Amen. Peace. 
Peace, 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 peace. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost.